was thinking of the song that was just saying, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. Now, that's not a complicated statement. And if the human mind could embrace the things of God, then it would, you know, then nobody would be lost because, it, I mean, you know, I mean, I don't care what you're trying, it ain't going to work because Jesus said he is the, not a, the way, the truth. No man, yet men are trying to get to God another way. That's not even intelligent. No, it's really not, you know, because he's already said he is the way. It's not another way. So we understand, but this, this journey is not a natural journey anyway. It is by revelation that you're going to know that, first of all, Jesus is the Christ. The Bible went on to say that whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And whatever, whoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory of our faith. And so it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it has to be a revelation. And I say that to help us to, to, get, to set the stage for what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about, you know, the love of God. We're talking about the title is God is Love. And that's, that's the theme that we're launching into this year with. And it is, it is, you know, God really, he counsels us to write visions down and to place them before our eyes. And that's why that is before your eyes. So every time you walk into this sanctuary, you're going to be reminded that God is love and also the instruction that follows as a result of God being love. Therefore, you're going to have to uh, be imitators, the counsel of God. Once you know or have been instructed that God is love, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Now, uh, <clears throat> that requires a revelation of love to imitate God. If, if it was just a matter of instructing someone to do it, then men could just do it all in the natural. But you can't do that in the natural. Jesus said to his disciples, who do men say that I am? And the response was that you are the Christ. And if you remember, Jesus said to them, well, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you. It is my Father. And so as simple a statement as God is love, you can't embrace that with your natural mind. It takes the wisdom and the revelation of God it has to be revealed to you. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, not by men. All scripture is given by inspiration. God breathed, God inspired, God spoken, God breathed. And so it is going to be, it is going to require the spirit of God to let you know what he said to reveal that unto you. And so as we move forward in looking at these, uh, looking at this lesson and it's going to be a continuous thing. We have to continue with this. And I know how the human mind is. You know, we like new things. You know, we, we want, can you get something fresh and new? Well, let's get the old and then we'll get something new. You know, but that's the way the mind, the mind is wired that way. The mind wants something new. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we, you know, we redecorate every so often. You know, I look at I look at Wow, they just rebuilt all they just redecorated all the stores. They were they were they were all right. It was in pretty good shape, I thought. But people, you know, you go into a department store, retail store, and you go in there one day and things here and tomorrow you're on the other side. They they move stuff around. The people with the mind, human mind is wired to want something new. We want something new. You know, we have that, even the phones, I, when I was a kid, well, we didn't have a phone anyway, but other people that had them, uh, they had the same black phone all along for a while. But now, you know, we have, you know, we had a, we have the, now we got phones in our pockets, but even we have to get a new one with that. Well, I can't fuss about it because I just got a new one. What am I saying? I'm just saying that that's the way we are. We want something new. 
But God is fresh and new every day. You don't have to redecorate for him. Every time you go to his word, it's fresh and new. And so therefore, men fail because our minds are wired in a way that we want to do something new. We want to hear something new all the time. We have tendencies to veer away from what God is saying and looking for some, something else for him to say. And, and that's why many have failed in receiving revelation because revelation is the result of a continuous application of the word of God. God is love. You've been hearing that for days since you get saved. And yet there are those that are not walking in love. They have not given themselves consistently enough in order to receive revelation. You just can't know what God said in your head. It has to be revealed to your spirit. And then you will walk in what he says. And we had, and, we, and, we, and, and, and that's, uh, that, and so that we have, the, we have principles of that. Let me just read this. Here's a, Here's a principle by uh, James over in the, uh, the book of James uh, in the first chapter and the 25th verse. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and does what? Continue. You see that word? It's an interesting term. He who looks into the... Perfect law of liberty and just go. No, he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. He being what? Not, not a forgetful hearer, but what? This one will be blessed in what he does. And then in the eighth chapter of John's gospel, the 32nd verse, if I'm correct in my thinking, John 8 and Verses 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believe him, if you abide or continue, abide and continue the same meaning. He who those who abide in my word or continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And verse 32 goes on to say, and you shall what? Know. know the truth. Well, knowing the truth and revelation are synonymous terms. Knowing the truth is revelation from God. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you, oh, hallelujah, we can do benediction. <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The truth is what's going to set you free. Everybody wants to be liberated. But the only thing that's going to liberate you is truth, Amen. revelation from God, God's word. The, the, the love of God is so simple. I was sitting in my study yesterday looking at this, and I'm looking at the simplicity. I'm like, God, it's so easy. He said, yeah, once you know. Once revelation comes, it's easy. The struggling is when you're trying to do this without revelation. That's where the struggle is. But there is no struggle. I mean, dear God, a third grader can read the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians and know what it says. Why is it that so many full, fully grown-up adults read it and act like it ain't even there? Husbands and wives, read that and act like it's not even there. How can you not obey after reading that 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians? Well, if you don't have revelation, you can do it. If having your way is more important than listening to God, then it's easy for you to have your way. 
And that's where a problem. They have what? They, there's no revelation. They don't have revelation. You just don't have the revelation of the love of God. And, and I'm telling you, if it had lips, Bear Creek, we're going to stay with this until somebody get it. I'm not going anywhere. We're going to hammer at this. 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 Because I know what's going to happen. When you get a love revelation, when you get the revelation of God's love, I'm going to, it's, it's, it, you, you're good to go. Don't, nobody's going to have to say anything else to you. I know that. I know that. I know that. Now, how is revelation coming? Through the word. It's going to be by way of the word. It, there's, 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 it's not going to be some little handout pamphlet. That's not going to do it. You say, well, well why don't you do PowerPoint? Maybe we'd understand. Now, I can do all the PowerPoint. I have PowerPoint on every wall. <laughs> and you're still not going to get it until revelation comes. And revelation is the result. See, see that's what we have, we have mixed our ability to learn with, and, and try to take our ability and, and know what God says. You, I've, you hear people say things like, and you maybe, I don't know if you ever heard it or not, well, I read the Bible. And I'm like, okay, where this goes with that? No, that's it. I read it. Poor thing, poor thing, poor thing. So what? You still don't know anything. You follow me? See, you have to understand that it is by revelation that I'm going to get free. It is by the revelation of, as it's by, in other words, revelation is when God speaks to your spirit. That's revelation. Now, many of you have experienced this time from time to time because everybody has got some revelation of some sort. But you ever, read, you ever be reading your Bible and you read what you consider to be familiar scripture text? And all of a sudden you got to go back and take a second look where God just, he just revealed to you what it, as many times as you've read that. I know there are scriptures that's just as plain as a, a, a third grader could read it. And I've read them and dear God, I'm like, what? I didn't know that was there. I remember once I had an experience with an with a, with a, with a older gentleman. This is way back in my, way back when I, you know, way back in my, in, in my life. I was, a, I was a younger fella, much younger. I was just, in fact, I was very young in the, in the faith and in the word of God. But I knew some things. God had taught me some things. I knew some things by revelation. I knew healing belonged to me. That I knew, you know what I mean? I cut my teeth on healing. But anyway, uh, I went to, uh, well, uh, uh, in fact, it was a relative of mine. He was a, 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 a member of a certain church in a certain city uh, north of here, and uh, he was the chairman of the deacon board, and he was sick. He had been sick, and I was led by the Spirit of God to go visit him, and I, and I really did, was a little, a little apprehensive about going. I thought, God, you want me to go up there? He know I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm nothing. You know, this is a deacon. And uh, he's, a, he's a man been in the church all, all these years, and he's an older man, ready to, you know, read by ready to go off the scene. And you want me to go tell him something? You know, because I was just a youngster. But anyway, you know what I mean? You can't talk to yourself. Hey, when God tells you to do something, you don't even worry about it. Don't, worry, don't try to talk your way out of it. But he didn't pay me no attention. I just, so I went on. But here's my point. Here's the point I'm trying to make. I went to see him. And, uh, and I, knew what I, I knew what I had to do, because Spirit of God already told me what I had to do. I knew what I had to do. And so when I walked in that room, I said, I said there's no need of procrastinating because once you start procrastinating, the devil will talk you out of doing it, you know. So I, I, I walked in there and I went right at it. I, just, I didn't stop when I finished speaking. I just grabbed the Bible and told him what I'm there for because <laughs> I'm told I got to come, I come to pray for you. And I, you know, and I just blab, blurted right out. And I opened the Bible and, I, you know, before you pray for me, you always want to read scripture to show them what you're praying about. So I opened the Bible to the, to, the, to the 16th chapter of Mark's gospel. You know, the Great Commission over there where he said, go preach the gospel to every Christian, those that believe and baptize. Then it said, these signs shall follow them that believe. And I'm just reading away, and I just read it because I'm going to read this, and then I'm going to pray for you. And I said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up the church. And then, if drink, and then they shall lay hands on the sick. Got to that part, because that's the part I wanted to get to. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. 
And I looked at him. And he was in amazement. And I never forgot that. He was, it was like he had never seen that scripture. And I almost had to break it. He was almost in a trance. He said, that's what it says. He kept saying, that's what it says. And I'm like, okay, let's get on with it. That's what. <laughs> but my, here's my point. Revelation came. God told him what he said. All of this man's like, oh, the man, man read it. He read it. In fact, he read it. Read it. Read it. Go off the scene. And he's, and he, and, and he's, and, and this boy comes in there and read this scripture to him and he sees it for the first time. I said that to show you how revelation comes. Just because you've been going to church for 50 years do not mean you know anything. And I was able to, and, 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 and he received it and me because he was in a traditional church that particularly they, they didn't particularly receive, you know, the kind of ministry that I was doing. But, they, you know, and, uh, but, but he, not only did he got to get, he get revelation, but he received me. And then he received the prayer that I prayed for him. Went to sleep and got t- I got a testimony that he had. That he slept better than that, that night than he ever slept. He slept in a long since he'd been sick. But, but my point is that, the whole point of me telling you this, is that it doesn't matter how long you've been going to church. It doesn't matter how long you've been reading certain scriptures. It takes the Spirit of God to open up your understanding to tell you what the Word of God says. See, the devil cannot have this. The devil can't have revelation. Now, he can read. He can read the letter, but he doesn't have any revelation. The Bible said, now, as much as the prophets talk about Jesus coming, dying, you know, uh, being, being the Messiah, you know what I mean? The devil didn't read it, but he didn't know what he was talking about. He didn't know what God was talking about. The Bible says, had the princes of this world known, they would have never killed the Lord of glory. The devil killed Jesus. He was ignorant. He didn't even know what he was doing. He didn't know that he was playing red. He didn't know he was hanging himself. And the scripture goes on to say, had they known, they would have never killed him. But he didn't know. You see, why? He had no revelation. Just because you can read, just because you can quote scriptures, does not mean that you have revelation. Revelation comes from God. You're not going to pick revelation up off the street. You're not going to get it out of a commentary. But God will open up your understanding and show you the light. When the light comes on, the light of God's word, come on, then you will know. See, when revelation comes, then that truth you know. How many people in here is born again? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I don't care who come to you and try to convince you that Jesus is really not the Son of God. I don't care what kind of, I don't care what kind of, I don't care what kind of, I don't care what kind of evidence they bring. It would go right in one ear and right out the other one. Why? Why is that? Because you know in your spirit, God has revealed Jesus to you. And can't no man take that from you. My dear friends, understand this. That principle works the same in every area of knowledge. When you get a revelation of healing, and a devil in hell will make you sick. If you get a revelation of it. In order for you to walk in love, the God kind of love that he is talking about here, you're going to have to have a revelation of love. You need a revelation of love. And the way that you are going to receive a revelation of love is a continuous. God already said, he said, if you look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, Continuing, continuing. Listen, did you notice we never get a new Bible? For 2,000 years, the last 2,000 years, we've had the same book. Well, the printing press came in around the 1500s, I think it was. 
they had scrolls, but we got books after that. After that. They produced and they printed these books out and put them in binders. But my point is that it's not, you're not going to get a new one. Well, you just keep reading the same one. I'm reading the same Bible that my dad read. He read the same one his dad read. Same, same book. Same book. Same book. But all this light, this light comes out of the word, the word of God. The word of God is pregnant with revelation. You, and, and you cannot unlock it. See, that's the mystery of this journey. See, God designed a system whereby he could minister and feed his children without feeding the devil's kids. He just, God designed it that way. Now, the devil's kids, they can read, but they don't know what they're reading. God's kids can read. They don't know what they're reading until God tells them. That's why the devil does not know God's plan. That's why he's in the dark. But God put the kid. But, but uh, it's, it's, that's wonderful. It's amazing. God is so brilliant. He is the epitome of brilliance. You would say, well, how am I going to get my truth to my kids and not that other bunch? You know, that's not a problem. I just, I give them, I, put, I, get, I get a letter to all of them. But, you know, the letter will kill you, you know. But the spirit so you got to know. So in order to know truth, God has to speak truth to you through and by way. And, and watch this. You're not just going to stumble upon revelation. You're not going to just stumble upon it. You, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna give yourself to it. And, and, and who knows whether you're giving yourself? God does. God looks on the heart of men. See, you can sit up there every night and burn midnight oil. Only you know why you're burning it. Amen. I don't know why you're burning midnight oil. But guess who does know? Father knows. Amen. See, see if you're burning the midnight oil so you can get the biggest church in town, what did I doubt if you can find out anything? Mm. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help us to understand. You're going to have to come to a point of, 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 of understanding and believing that you are going nowhere until God takes you. Amen. And it's going to be by way of, the, of truth. God's truth being revealed to you. And God knows your heart. When your heart is right and you're giving yourself continually to the things of God, then God will talk to you. And he'll reveal these things to you. As simple as the letter seems on the subject of love, Many are not walking in it. And the reason they're not walking in it is because they have no revelation of it. Right. You've got to have a revelation of God's love God. in order to walk it out. Some are trying to walk it out in the flesh, and it's not going to work. That won't work. It won't work. You, you know, it'll only work until you get mad. <laughs> and, you, and you're going to get mad soon, so the devil will see to that. See, when you, when you try to walk in love in the flesh, it'll work, it'll work until somebody's getting your way. I see, oh dear God, I see that. I've seen, I've seen people, stuff come out of people's mouth. I'm like, where in the world did that come from? They've been faking it. I know where it comes from. They've been faking it. You can't do that. But when, the, when you get a revelation of the love of God, it changes your heart. Your heart is changed. And it doesn't matter. You can pray for your enemies then. You can take wrong then. It doesn't matter what you say or do to me. I'm going to be the same. When your heart has been changed. I don't care if you make a rug out of me when my heart's been changed. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Once I have revelation, but until I have revelation, it's going to make a lot of difference in how you treat me. See what I mean? That's how you know. So how am I going to get it? A continuous, 
a continuous, a continuous in looking into the Word of God. So let's, let's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're not going to talk about theory. We're going to talk about the Word. Amen. Never mind theory. Amen. Ephesians, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1, chapter 4. These this instructions that's outlined here let's pick up at the twenty seventh well pick up at verse twenty five. Pick up at verse twenty five of Ephesians four. Ephesians four twenty five. The, tr- the oh God. Okay. All right. I get excited about this. Ephesians 4.25. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one, one another. Be angry, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Him who has need, not him who is lazy, but him who has need. It's two, it's two different people. Him, him who is lazy and him who has need is two different people. I can prove that to you by scripture. If you, Paul says another place, if you don't work, you don't eat. So don't, don't, don't try to come on with that, with that one. So here again, we're talking about revelation. Let no, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is what? Good for necess, uh, necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearer. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Now, all of these things that God is counseling us to do, you can put human effort into doing these things. But it won't work. Now, how many times have you heard Christians complain about how hard the Christian journey is? Oh, boy, you hear that all the time. They, they, they just, I met a lady yesterday. If I can shop right, I met a lady yesterday. <laughs> no, it wasn't shop right. No, it was. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and she, you know, I saw her, and you know, I, I see her. She works, she works there. She, but she, wasn't, she wasn't working yesterday. She was shopping. Um, and she would look, and she says, oh, pastor, I don't know. She just looked, and she was so full on. And I just tried to lift her up and bless her. And she said, yeah, you know, I, she says, uh, I don't know, Jesus, I don't know why he don't like me. Something to that effect. Because what she was saying, she, what she was really so she was saying, she was saying she's ready to get out of here. That's what she was telling me. She said, but he won't take me. <laughs> I really I'm telling you, this is the truth. This is true. She said, she, she wants to go. She said, he don't want me. He don't want me. I said, she said, I said sister, he got some best for you to do before you leave. Amen. But she, she said, oh, I want to go. I want to go. <laughs> My point is that, you know, she just, she just seemed, it seemed to be a struggle. Life she just seemed to be a struggle. She wanted to, I'm, I'm ready, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm, and, then you, and you find that. I've heard creepy people, you Christians, just, they ain't thinking about nobody. They, oh, Jesus, come, come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. I'll be glad when you get here. I said, what about the people that I don't know about him yet? Don't you think about them? They ain't think about them. My point is that if you don't have revelation, and understanding about the whys of everything, you, it's going to be a toil for you. And I know it because I hear this. Oh, you never say it's going to be easy and all this crazy stuff. And they just, they just, I mean, just, oh, it's so hard. It's hard. Yes, because you are trying to do all of this stuff in the flesh. 
and you're not giving yourself to the word of God to understand that this is a faith spirit journey. When you get revelation of the love and of the faith of God and learn how to operate in love and faith, it's going to change your countenance. It's going to be a different person. There's no more struggle. There's no more poor mouthing. But it's victory coming out of your mouth. God said your faith is your victory. He didn't say faith is your poor mouthing and Forlorn face and, 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 and dragging and oh God and oh my, my, my and all that. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. You got to stir your own self up. But faith and love will do that. Flesh can't stir himself up. Flesh is going to gripe and moan and try to get it a flesh way. And it's never going to happen. You're going to stay in a grind. Why would you stay in a grind all the time? And there are those that's been on a grind for the last. They don't remember. They don't remember anything else but grind. And they and the and the devil tricks people to make them think that's it. If you in a tailspin all the time, somebody in the hood went you. Now you look at look at the look at the apostle Paul. This guy dealt with a whole lot of stuff, and he's the one that said, "Rejoice always." Again, I say, "Rejoice." Amen. How can you talk like that? Because the guy has revelation. Amen. You'll get that joy when you get revelation. Joy comes with revelation. Joy comes with revelation. Circumstances doesn't take away my joy. Amen. Amen. Everybody wants to be happy. I want to be happy. I don't have any scripture for that. You don't make me happy. I never, I never got to have no scripture to make you happy. I have scripture to love you. Be kind to you. Forgive you, but I don't have no scripture to make you happy. Your happy is on you. I say your happy is on you. But people, people always, they blame another folk for not making them happy. <laughs> yeah. I have no scripture to make you happy. Listen, here's, let me read the scripture. Let me tell you what I'm here. What, let me read to you. I, I, here's the scripture. 30, verse 32. And be kind to one another. I have scripture to be kind to you. Tenderhearted. I have scripture to be tenderhearted toward you. Forgiven. I have scripture to forgive you. But I have no scripture to, be, to make you happy. That's on you. I choose to be happy. That's why I get my happy from you. You'll make me happy. <laughs> That's my choice. Happy, happy is my choice. See, see, you understand how this, how this is? See, what we see, we see, as long as you stay in the flesh, you're going to always be pointing your finger. Some, something or someone else is the reason for your failure. It started with Adam. As long as you're in the flesh, something or someone is responsible for your failure. But when you're operating in the spirit by the revelation of the word of God, now it's none of that anymore. When you fall in love, that's, that's why Paul said to the church at Corinth, they were there and they, just, they were just, oh dear Lord, taking one another to court and all that. He said, why don't you just take wrong? Why do you have to, why do you have to get even with somebody? 
don't you just take wrong? You qualify. You're born again. You have the love of God that's been shed abroad in your heart by Holy Spirit himself. So why don't you just take wrong? Can't you, ta- can't you handle it? Why are you working for, depending on someone else to fulfill you? No, 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 no. See, here's the thing. See, when, when the love, when we get a revelation of love, this thing, it just comes, so, everything comes clear. You're just kind of like, like a foggy morning, and all of a sudden, you can't see far when it's foggy, you know. Then the fog lifts, and it's like, wow. You can see clearly. That's the way it is when revelation comes to your life. I mean, dear God, I mean, everybody out there is going in the coming. Every day, every person, everybody in this room, every face in this room is going in the coming. Got something going on in their head. Who has peace? He who has revelation. That's who has peace. If you have no revelation, something is eating you. Something is at you. Because you don't have revelation of love. See, when love's on the scene, when you become an imitator, okay, is, is God okay? Do you think he's in it? Do you think he's stewed up about anything? And you, and the average person say, well, no, God's fine. He's okay. Well, then didn't he tell you to act like him? So that's why I put that before your eyes. It's not a complicated statement. It's not something I, that's too deep for me. No, no. That ain't deep. That's right on the surface. Be imitators of God. Look at him. Follow the instructions that he give you and I to make us like him. How is it? Well, the instructions that he give us to make him like him, he said, a new commandment I give to you that you what? Love one another as I have loved you. That you also may love one another. That's what I do. Now you mimic me. But God, you don't know what she did. He didn't ask you what she did. What she did has nothing to do with what he is counseling you to do. Get your eyes on God. Jesus fixed Peter. He was giving him final instructions over there in the back of John's gospel. And he's telling Peter what he wants him to do. And all of a sudden, he gets his eyes on somebody else. He can't have here Jesus for looking at John. Well, what about John? I tell you what, that's one of the most none of your businesses ever I heard Jesus say. (laughs) You do what I'm telling you to do. If John stays here till I come back, what's that to you? And we always want to know what about the way somebody treat me. Forget about what somebody, the way someone treated you. The way someone treats you is none of your business anyway. See how my wife treats me is none of my business. No, come on. How my wife treats me is none of my business. My business is how I treat her. That's my business. And the problem has been we are so concerned about how somebody is treating us that we lose sight and lose counsel on what God has told us to treat other people. I get it, I get it in my office. Everybody, when they come in, they, she got her list and he got his list. His list is on her, and her list is on him. And both say they saved. I'm like, dear God, help them. Worrying about somebody else's conduct. Worrying about what somebody else does. Other folks' conduct is none of your business. I know this is tight. I know it's tight, but, the, but you get a revelation of love, I tell you what, it'll set you free. How other people treat you is none of your business. Even down to your spouse. Yeah, but you don't know she don't have cook and she don't. Uh, that's, 
not your problem. See, you ain't lost no weight. So it evidently ain't that bad, that bad. It ain't that bad. No, come on. But no, I'm telling you. But see, in the natural, in the, that seems so legit about what someone does to you. No! God's business. God is trying to teach you a better way. And if you can stand still long enough to listen to God's counsel and to take hold to wisdom and follow through, then you'll, 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 you'll get delivered. You'll get delivered. I've, 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 I've seen this. I've, I've, I've heard testimonies. I've heard testimonies of this. I heard a testimony about a man, and this guy ended up, ended up being a man of, man of faith, powerful ministry afterwards. But before that happened, he was a terror. He was a terror. And I heard this testimony about him. And he was so bad, he was, see, dear God, he did. His wife was already, always, always with the Lord. She was always tr tr living right. But he was a pff, terror. And he didn't want to, she get, he get mad, she'd go to church. And he tried to make, he tried to not keep her from going to church. She said, this is way back in the day, way back in the years ago. And uh, he tried to tell her, you ain't going to that church. Now. You've been out in that church every night. You're going to that church. Don't go to that church. <laughs> so she told him just as nicely. She said, well, you know, you're my husband, but you're not my Lord. Went on, took care of her. She took care of her business and went on to church. And of course, when she went to, when she come home that night, he had the door locked. Now don't try that today. Did, did you go to jail for that? <laughs> this is this is some years. This is way back. I think it's back in. The, but he had a, he locked her outside. No, no, this is a true story. He locked her outside. And she just sat on the door, slept, and slept right there by the door. And he opened the door the next morning, and she got him and said, honey, good morning. What would you like for breakfast? <laughs> no, this is a true story. True story. Amen. You'll find out if you're saved. I'm telling you, you'll find out if you're saved. Amen. And she gets up. She gets up, you know what I mean? She said, good morning, honey. I said, what would you like for breakfast? She went and fixed. She went, <laughs> she went and she made his breakfast right. just, like she would, just like she would have done if she had slept in the house. Right. Changed him. It transformed him. Right. Became, had one, became one of the greatest ministers of the gospel way back in, back in the country of England. And if I call his name, some of you may have heard of him. His name was Smith Wigglesworth. Yeah. <coughs> and one of the greatest healing ministers. Why? See, you, see, you see what I see? The love was operating before his eyes. See. Right. Changed him. Amen. Got saved, come to know Jesus, and became one of the greatest... Because, see, see, this was, see, see, you think, see, what our problem is, we, oh, God, I don't know if I could do that. Everybody knows you can't do it. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but you've got to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and trust the word of God to work in Amen. you. I don't take on, I'm not telling you to take these things on in the flesh because your flesh can't do it. <laughs> but it is God that's working in you giving you the desire and the power to do those things that pleases him. And you see, with your, if you allow your flesh, listen to me real careful, because this is very important. This is very important. If you allow your flesh to become arrogant over you and make public statements about what you're not going to put up with, then you are not in position for God to do anything with you. As long as you sit around saying things like, well, I don't know, I, I, could, I could never do that. Just shut up. Everybody knows no flesh can't do that. And God's not expecting your flesh to do it. But it is God that works in you, working in you, giving you the desire. Philippians 2.13, put it up in NLT. It's God that's working in you, not you. I know you can't love you. You can't even love you. For it is what? God is working where? Giving what? You the desire and the power to do what pleases him. It is the good pleasure of God for you to love one another. 
So it is God that's working in you that's giving you the desire and the power to do what you need to do. Why would you buck against that? Yeah, but I don't know. See, 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 you, nothing's going to change with you. There's nothing going to change with you. There's nothing going to change with you. Because you, you won't even allow God to do it. Don't, don't you see how this thing starts with an attitude? Revelation starts with an attitude. Amen. Receiving this revelation that we're talking about starts with an attitude. What's your attitude toward the word of God when you sit down with that book? Yes, Lord. Are you sitting down with that book trying to find something that pleases you? Or are you going to sit in there and read the whole thing and say, well, bless God, I'm going to do whatever God wants me to do. I'm no longer my own anyway. Amen. Amen. Attitude. Yeah, Attitude. You read certain scriptures, and blah, blah, blah. I can't do that. No, no, you won't. You can't. No, you won't. Don't you see? It's, you see, it's attitude. Yes, Lord. Attitude. That's why God said, humble yourselves yeah. under the mighty hand of God. Yeah. That he may exalt you. Amen. Praise God. Everybody wants to be exalted, but you are not, you cannot exalt yourself. You don't have enough to exalt you. All, if all you're working, you operating on your, you're gonna stay in a tailspin. All you're gonna do is you doing your life, you just gonna, it ain't working anyway. You know that. You, it, it hasn't been working. You don't have no peace. You don't have no joy. Your needs are not met. You're just in a tailspin all the time. Don't you want to change that? God. Walking in love will change it. Yeah. And in order to walk in love, you're going to have a love of revelation. Amen. In order to have a love of revelation, you're going to have, have an attitude, toward, right attitude toward the Word of God. And then you're going to have to attend to it. Attend to my Word, my son. Incline your ears to my saying. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. You are not going to go to work and make enough money to be successful. Forget that. Ain't no such thing as that. But I'm just going to give me, no, I'm going to get another job. Get it. Go get you another one. Get two, three or more if you want to, but you're going to be in the same tailspin. When am I going to get out of this mess? When you get love revelation of God inside of you. That's when you're going to get out of that mess. Is when you get a love revelation. When you come to a point where it doesn't matter about me, I've been crucified anyway. It's no longer I who live, but the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And you've got to take on that. You've got to take that on. Jesus, have any man come after me, what shall he do? Ah, glory to God, you need to go back and reread it. Deny yourself. You don't even count. It doesn't matter about you. But let me tell you what they did to me. I don't even care. Now, I know that sounds mean. Because that's not the issue at hand. What are you doing? What have you chosen to do? Well, let's look at God's instructions. His instructions here says, and be kind to one another. Huh, but Jesus, what if the, he didn't say that. Forget that. And be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God in Christ forgave you. You see what that is? That's imitating God. That, he said, that's, what, that's what he said. Therefore, look at the next verse. Therefore, don't pay the chapter no attention. Therefore, be imitators of God. That's what he does. Jesus is hanging on the cross, paying for your sin. Not his. And he said, you do the same. And then in the, in you, in you hear him say, Father, forgive them. Now look at, look at what they're doing to Jesus. And he prays, forgive them. And just because your supper was late last night, you didn't forgive your wife. 
and you call, and you're a Christian. Sitting on the front seat. Something wrong with you. No, come on, people. Because, see, we want to talk in theory. I want to talk at you. I want to lay it on the line. I want you to see you. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what people do. They all been, been out of shape for two days. Because the chair was in the wrong place. <laughs> Anything. No, no. Don't you see? That's not the problem. It doesn't matter where the chair was. The problem is with you. Because if it hadn't been a chair, it would have been a table. It would have been something else. Right. It doesn't matter. You ever notice you come in the house one day, your shoes in the floor, the next day it doesn't matter? It's only a problem when you, when you messed up inside. You come in there in a couple of dirty dishes in the sink, and then you do off the handle. That had nothing to do with the dishes. Had nothing to do with them dishes. That's you. It was the dishes in the last week. You didn't say nothing. Come on. You better get wise enough to find out the problem within you. It's not the other person looking for something to vent your frustrations because you, don't, you refuse to walk in love. You're looking for some way to get it out. Ah. People, this is where we live. And then walk up in church and shake hands. Bless you, brother. No, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is real. This is more real than you think. This is more real than you think. It's get, it gets worse than that. On the way to church. And then soon to see somebody jump out, hey, hey, sister, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wondering. Why can't I get my bills paid? Wondering why. It seems like as soon as I fix one thing, something else breaks. Wondering why. I don't understand. I don't understand why I'm sick. Wow. You're not walking in love, Bo. You're not walking in love. Praise God. This is mandatory. Praise God. The love of God is the release of the glory of God. Yes. When you begin to walk in love, it releases the glory. Amen. Amen. Love of God is manifest in our reaction toward one another. The love of God is manifest in how we treat one another. That's why he said, the new commandment I give unto you, that you do what? Love one another. As what? It, it's the love of God. See, you can't, you can't, you can't just say, I got it going on with Jesus and not have it going on with me. That, 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 that's another lie that Howland put out. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. I just read that. I didn't make that up. That's not notes. A what? Liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? People, somebody in here is going to have to repent. And repent, don't get excited about repent. Repent doesn't mean just quit that. Amen. Amen. That's it. You just quit that and get on the word of God. Amen. See, repent don't necessarily mean coming into the altar, altar hollering and bawling and screaming and hollering and spitting and jerking. Watch this. You can come to the altar, holler, spit and jerk and go back and nothing has changed in you. <laughs> Happens all the time. But you got to make a decision inside of you. God, you got to talk to God about this. You don't, don't, don't talk to me about it. You got to talk to God about this. If you want to move forward, and if you, if you want to break out of where you are and go further, your love's going to have to be right. Amen. 
I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm not going to kid you, and I'm not going to play games with you. If you're not walking in this kind of love that we're talking about here, mm-hmm. it's not going to work for you. Mm-hmm. Your faith ain't going to work right. Faith works by love. Mm-hmm. You can't just dress up and put makeup and cover sin up. You can't dress up and put a smile on her, a false smile on and cover right, it. Right, right, no, right, right. it's God ain't looking at that thing on that, that roof, lipstick and stuff. Right. He's looking at their heart. Amen. God considers the heart. God knows what you are thinking about yes, when it's does. just yes, you. Yes, he knows your most intimate inward thoughts. Mm-hmm. That's how he expects us to operate. Oh, yeah. And when you get, no, and here again, we're not talking about human ability. Because, see, that's what, that's what the devil used to throw many of us. We're not talking about human ability. We're talking about making a decision inside of you saying, God, I really want to do what's right. Amen. That's all it is. People, we're not talking about something, something out, out of your reach. We are talking about something that every breathing being sitting in this room can do is come to the prodigal son came home because he sit down and came to himself. He ended up with a robe on because he came to himself. All God is God loves you so much. He is loving you right now to come to yourself. That's all he's saying. He is just saying he is. He don't God don't want to put a strap on you. You couldn't stand it anyway. He don't want to strap you. His arms is stretched out to embrace you. Not to whack you. That's how the devil has lied to people's soul. They think God's going to get me. Well, honey, if he hasn't got you by now, don't worry about it. He wants his arms. Is stre- and what does he want? He, he, all he, want, he doesn't want you to, I got to do, no, all he wants you to do is say, Lord, I just, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. In your heart, in your heart. I, I want to, I want, I want a revelation of this love. I, I want, I, I want this love. I want to mimic you. I really want to imitate you. I know, I know I can't do it within myself. But I, I give myself so that you can give me, I don't even, God, I don't even have the desire to not love, to, to love these people. Mm. Uh, God will give you the desire to yes, do it. Yes. Oh, God. I heard Brother Mark told me some years ago, he said, he said, God gave him a desire to read the Bible. Yeah. Wow, God. that's simple enough. Amen. He didn't want to read no Bible. Right. Mm. So God gave him a desire to read it. Yeah. Well, he, that's what God said he'd do. Yeah. God. Well, what, you know, God will give you a desire to love Aunt Minnie. He will. Yes, he will. I know you don't think so the way you're thinking now. You think, oh, can you? <laughs> you don't know it like I do. <laughs> no, come on. Come. No, but I'm telling you, God goes far beyond the flesh. His, the Spirit of God is so full. When God's Spirit embraces you, right. there's nothing in the natural that compared to telling you how it works. I, I don't know. It's just amazing. It's amazing. But, but, but that's, the what, that's what's going to have to happen. you got to come to yourself. The prodigal son was out there in the pig pen. He was doing everything until he came to himself. There's a lot of prodigals still out there. That means you don't belong to, you don't belong to God. You still got a father, but you're a prodigal. Well, you won't yield. You won't surrender. You're still trying to do it yourself. Trying to make your own way. No, no, it's not going to work that way. Surrender to him. Let him give you a revelation of love. And when you get a revelation of love, it's going to change the whole dynamics of your life. The love of God. Listen to what he says here. He says, just, and, and, and I, I like because he, it, he doesn't make it complicated. He says, just mimic me. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. In other words, I know you can't do it. I know that. So watch this. Do what I do. 
do what I do. You see what I mean? So in order to mimic, mimic God or do what he does, you got to know what he does. Amen. Well, in order to, well, how am I going to find out what he does? i got to go to the book. Amen. Right. That's right. So you, don't you see it's, it's the word any way you cut it? Yes. If you, you say, well, God said, I'm going to make it easy for you. Just do what I do. Amen. If I stand up, you stand up. If I sit down, you sit down. If I raise my hand, you raise your hand. If I speak, you speak. But watch this. If you are not close to him to see what he does, how can you do what he does? You can't imitate him. And you got to go to the word to be able to imitate him. And so he said, do what I do. What I do. Be imitators of God. Then he goes on to verse 2 and says, and walk in love. Oh, boy. Well, how do I do that? Watch what God does. He is kind to the unthankful. But you mad at the unthankful. That's not mimicking God. And he said, walk in love. Can't you see how this is going to change you? Forget other people's conduct. I'm telling you. If you keep your eyes on other people, this is not going to work for you. Forget other people and what they are doing. Because what they are doing is none of your business. I'm trying to get me straight. I don't have time to look at other people. I spend all of my time on me. That's how I can love everybody now because I don't know what you're you're doing. You say, you love the people? Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. I don't have time to see what they're doing. I don't have time. Why? I'm watching me. See, because I don't don't know what they're doing. See, you know, he was was falling down drunk. I said, I don't know. I didn't see him. I was trying to keep me from falling down drunk. (laughs) So I don't know what he's doing. But you, so if you're looking at somebody else, you're not looking at you. Amen. See, you're not looking at you. Amen. God said, mimic, do what I do, walk in love. Look at it, look at what it says. Walk, walk in, and walk, verse 2, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. That's what, where you do the same thing. And then he goes on, then he, then, then he goes on and says, now you're going to have to put a check on your flesh now. Mm-hmm. You can't turn your flesh loose and say, well, I'm walking in love and just let your flesh go wild. No. And, but fornication? Oh, boy. And all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. He said, you gotta, he said don't do that. Now, now, watch this. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't just say, I'm not going to do this. That won't work. Submit to God and allow him, because (laughs) your flesh haven't changed, just in case you think so. Now, you can, you know, it's amazing, you know, the glory of God come on you, you know what I mean? You can be, you can be, you can be, you can be almost flying. And the glory come on you, you'll think, boy, I'll never want to do that again. Yes, you will. <laughs> yes, you will. Yes, you will. Saying, I'll never want to look at that again. Yes, you will. <laughs> yes, you will. Just because you're flying right now, don't, don't think you will. Because you're not going to be flying all the time. <laughs> but what do you do while you're flying? Receive from God something to help you when you're not flying. Amen. Amen. The love of God. Yeah. Now when I come down, when I'm, I'm, I'm flying, I, when I come back down to the ground and I'm flying and, and, and yet this little thing walked past, you know what I mean, with dress sawed off. Now, now, now I don't want to because, watch this, because the love of God's in my heart and I don't want to embarrass him. Amen. You see what I mean? Because I have a relationship because I've got the, I, I don't want to. Do, now flesh is still, let me tell you something. Don't you ever get so saved that you think, well, I turn your flesh loose, it'll do anything it ever did. I'll tell you that right now. Your flesh will do anything it's not saved. Your flesh will do anything that it ever did. But when the glory comes on you, it puts something in you to make you keep it under subjection. But don't get, don't let, don't be deceived to think, oh, I won't ever, I don't ever want to do. Oh, yes, you will. And men get in trouble that way. They think, dear God, they're just riding high. 
Better watch them birds to get their heads up the highest. <laughs> nice target. Highest head. Nice target. The devil don't care. I've seen good men. The scripture said good men have gone down. Good men. Men better than you. Been sucked in by the devil. Okay. And so what am I saying? Humble yourselves continually under the mighty hand of God, trusting, resting your hope fully upon the grace of God that's brought unto us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Never trusting your flesh. Don't ever, don't ever think, I got this. But your hope is in the grace of God, not in you. And when you do that and receive this revelation, as God begins to minister his love unto you, you'll see yourself begin to grow and you'll begin to excel. And you'll be able to do what God's called you to do. And you'll be a light. And you'll be an example for other people to reach down and help somebody else and bring them out. Go ahead, stand to your feet. Glory to God. Glory to God. God.